okay, my first communicants, come sit down on the floor in front of me. <laughs> okay. It's lesson time. Yes, you, you <laughs> okay, good. All right, comfy? All right. Okay, so today we have this reading from the gospel, but there was a second reading I want to start with, the book of Revelations. Do you remember the second reading? Maybe not, so I'm going to remind you, okay? So in the second reading, we heard, uh, I, John, looked and heard the voices of many angels who surrounded the throne and the living creatures and the elders. They were countless in number, lots and lots of people, right? Okay, so how many of you have been to a, like, a, a stadium? Or a, you have? Which stadium were you at? Uh, I was at the Michigan Stadium. The Michigan Stadium? That's the, the one in Ann Arbor? Yep, right? The, that's the big house, right? How many people does that hold? Anyone know? How, what? 104,000? 104,000 people. Okay, who else is at a stadium? Where, where were you? Uh, the, Marysville the Marysville Stadium. That's pretty big. Yeah, yeah, good. That's pretty big for this town, right? Yes. Who else is at a stadium? A big place where they play sports or something like that. You guys, do you know which one? What about Comerica Park where they play, the Lions play? What about the, the Tiger Stadium? You've been to Tiger Stadium? Okay, so you've been there? Yeah, okay. So, so, so how many people are in those, those big places gathered? There's a whole, it's like 100,000 people. Can you imagine what 100,000 people look like? Well, if you went to the stadium and you saw all the seats full, it's about what like maybe 100,000 people might look like. All right, and they're looking at what? They're looking at what is going on in the field or everybody is all in these seats and they're looking down at what's going on on the field. All right? This kind of reminds us of the second reading because there's all these, all the living creatures and elders and all these countless people in number. There are so many people that they couldn't count that high. And they were all looking at one thing. What were they looking at? The lamb on the throne. They were looking at, at the lamb on the throne. Who's the lamb? Go ahead. Jesus, that's right. Jesus is the lamb. That's right. So they're all looking at Jesus. Because why? Because they recognize him. They recognize him. And so this is what, when you get to the gospel about the disciples' fishing expedition, it's all about how Jesus is being revealed to them, revealed to them, revealed to them, because they don't recognize Jesus. So what happens in the gospel, do you remember? The, the, the disciples went fishing and there's like stranger on the seashore. They didn't really know who it was at first. And he said, children, have you caught anything to eat? And what did they say? No, no that's right. They said no. Now, anyone ever go fishing? Anyone ever go fishing? You know, a lot of you went fishing. That's good. Have you ever went fishing from, from was it dawn until dusk? That's how they fished. They went out at night and then they would fish all night long, many, many hours in the cold, uh, and sometimes it gets cold at night. If it's a really warm summer night, you might be okay, but fish don't bite when it's too hot, right? You gotta get them when they're cooler when they're feeding, right? So that's when they catch the fish. Well, they were out all night long. Now, have you ever went fishing and didn't catch anything? Nothing at all? Couple? Yeah. How'd it make you feel? Upset, yeah, exactly. You go out fishing, you spend all this time fishing, and you never catch a fish, right? That's how the disciples felt. They were probably upset. Not only were they hungry because they went fishing, they were hungry, but then they're tired, they're probably cold, and they're upset, right? Because they didn't catch anything. So what happens? Mr. Stranger on the seashore says, he, throw the net over the right side of the boat and you'll find something. Now, I don't, know if, I don't know about you, but if it were me who has been out several hours at night fishing, I, probably wouldn't say, I would probably would have said something like, hey, Mr. Stranger on the seashore, we don't know who you are, and I'm an expert fisherman. I've been doing this my whole life, but there's no fish to be caught. We've been out all night long, so we're just going to pull the boats in, and I'm tired, I'm cold, and I'm hungry. I want to go to bed. That's probably what I would have said, right? It's not what the disciples did, is it, though? What'd they do? They obeyed. They took a chance. All right, they took a chance, and then once they threw the net over the side of the boat, what happens? That's right, they catch fish. Big catch of fish. Even tells us how many, 153 large fish. Okay, even tells us how many. So, so then, what we, and then what happens is the disciple whom Jesus loved, you know who that is, the disciple whom Jesus loved? 
John, good. All right, good parents. All right, all right, point good. All right, great. That's right. The disciple whom Jesus loved is John. So what does John say to Peter? It is the Lord. That's what he says. It's the Lord. So John realizes it's the Lord. And what does Peter do? He jumps in the sea and he swims to the shore because he's so excited to figure out that it's the Lord. Okay, and all these people in Revelations, uh, all the sea creatures and everything in the universe, they cry out to the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Okay, they all recognize who Jesus is. What's, why are you here today? Why are you dressed like this? It's First Communion, it's first communion right. Who are you going to receive? You're going to receive Jesus. Is it going to look like Jesus? No. What's it going to look like? Bread. bread. It's going to look like bread. That's right but it's Jesus, right? So faith helps you recognize Jesus. Jesus reveals himself to us, and you recognize that what you're about to receive is Jesus' food for your souls, okay? That's the whole thing about this realizing who Jesus is. There's a lot of people who don't realize who Jesus is, that we have Jesus on our altar, and we Jesus in the tabernacle, but we're gonna make Jesus out of bread and wine. It's gonna be Jesus, that's the great reveal. That is the great reveal that Jesus does for us so that he can feed us. So then realizing it's the Lord, is it good to know the Lord? It's good to know where the Lord, yes, exactly. It's good to know the Lord. Why is it good to know the Lord? Because he's gonna bless you, good, all right, that's right. That's, so what, that's exactly what happened to the disciples. What happens when they obeyed the Lord's command? They caught a bunch of fish. And not only did they cut, catch enough to eat, they had more than they needed. They caught in abundance. So when we know the Lord and we recognize the Lord and we listen to the Lord, he blesses us with more than we could ever need. So you have wants and needs. Do you know the difference between wants and needs? Maybe your next, who, who, wants, who wants the next iPhone? No, no. What, 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 do, you, what do you guys want next? Who wants salvation? Okay, yeah, me too. Okay, yeah, all right, good, exactly. So what, you, we might ask God for all kinds of different things, but he's gonna give us more than what we need for our great salvation and happiness. That's what's demonstrated in this little fishing expedition with the disciples is Jesus gives them more than what they need. And so then uh, when we follow Jesus' instructions, he provides for all our needs. Do you have needs? Do you ask God for those needs to be met? Yes. Does he meet those needs? Yes. <laughs> In time. Maybe you're asking for things too early, but eventually he will meet all your needs. And so this is one of the, one of the major themes of the gospel is that Jesus, through the Eucharist that you're about to receive today, he will provide everything you need for your soul. That's the most important thing because your souls live forever. Who you are is your soul. And so we want to keep feeding our soul with the Eucharist, and by faith, we'll be able to follow Jesus. And so if we are following Jesus, that means we listen to his commands, we listen to what he says, and his teachings. That's what Jesus says in the gospel. That's how it ends, right? Follow me. Do you want to follow Jesus? Why do you want to follow Jesus? Because, yeah, go ahead. Because he protects you, that's right and he's gonna bless us, and he's gonna give us everything we need in abundance. What's that mean to us? What's all that stuff mean? It means happiness. If I stay close to Jesus, then I'm always gonna be happy. And if I stay close to him in the Eucharist, my soul is always gonna be fed, all right? You don't have, you don't have to eat fish for breakfast, okay? But you can if you want, but the disciples were used to that, okay? Good, all right, so then what's gonna happen then is eventually I'm gonna call for your books when the offertory starts. I'll give you a little signal. The books that uh, the, t the children will be offering, will be part of the offertory, that is a symbol for their uh, prayers and their efforts and energy that they put in in preparation uh, for uh, this first Holy Communion, which is a really awesome day for you. So you are the center of attention today, but you're probably the center of attention every day at your homes, aren't you? No? Okay. Maybe. Sometimes. You might have to compete with some siblings, right? Okay. Let's get back to your seats, okay?
All right, careful with the dresses, girls. 